Now with this tune, uh, this little drop D lick that I've done, it actually isn't a tune yet, so feel free to create one on your own out of it, as if I just gave you the first two paragraphs in a story and you write the rest. But basically I start off with a D chord, and then you'll notice on beat three, I have that little sort of ghost note there for this index finger, because he stays down, and I purposely want to shift into this fingering for this, so that my third finger is going to be free coming up. So I always look when I'm fingering my tunes with both hands at what's coming next. So when I go now right there on the end of the two beat, you'll notice in the musical notation above, there's a, um, a rest, an eighth note rest. I don't stop it with my palm like that, but I want to get kind of a kind of a one of the ways to stop it without doing your palm or without doing a palm mute is with your left hand, if the instant you play it, you release with this hand, if you release the pressure, and if your left hand stays on the strings, but you release the pressure from the strings, then it'll kind of kill that. So I think that's real important to kind of pop that a little bit and not have it just sustain and run away from you. Then my, you'll notice the notations on top of the tablature that show which fingers to use. Then my third finger comes down, then my pinky is now available. And like I've talked about before with hammer-ons, at the same time a left hand finger comes down and the right thumb would strike. It's the same kind of concept with slides where you'll notice as soon as the pinky arrives at fret 7, that's exactly when the thumb needs to come down in time. And then there's my A chord, and then with my thumb, you'll notice coming up, I did a sort of an arpeggio run with my thumb. If you examine the bass notes, it's just going to be 6, 5, 4, 5. But on beat 3, you'll notice the vibrato above this uh, third uh, fret second string, this D note. That kind of brings the tune to life a little bit. Right there, it kind of, it's a little bit more vibrant of a note, so it's not so stale. Now coming up here, you'll notice that the last note I played was this index finger on fret 2. That frees up my third finger. In a grace note, it's almost as if you forgot to play the fifth and you sneak up on it, like that. Now here's a little bit of a tricky part. My second finger is going to play that fourth fret, fourth string, and as it's sliding back in time, I repeat that, in time, your third string open has to occur as you're gliding back. And at the same time your middle finger here, your second finger on your left hand arrives at fret two, that finger is going to come down, your index to uh, collect up that little hammer. And then also at the same time your right thumb is going to come down on fret, or uh, string five rather, open. So I would encourage you on that little passage there, there's always one difficult part to a tune, and I think this might be the part that would give people the most trouble. Whoop. So work on just that move alone, cycle it in. And don't feel like you have to do it over and over so many times without a break in the middle, so give yourself a chance to take a breath. And then when you can, like you're putting a puzzle together, maybe add that next note. And so maybe take that measure four and treat it like this. And then, and then try and put those together. And then you have a repeat from the beginning. Now what I do here is, instead of going back to this A, this is sort of an A. It's, this is an F half bar chord, and if you were to take this up two frets, that's a G, that's an A. If I just target these two fingers here, I can refinger that. 
it gives a little bit more of an interesting sound. It's a slight variation. So um, on that next measure there on five and six, you'll see. Like that. And then measure seven there, I wrestled with this a lot, but um, as far as a right hand thought of how to do this, I'll give you a couple of options here. But basically you'll notice that from measure six, that sixth fret that's down here, that finger's going to slide up. So once again, it's the common thread. And then if you look at the right hand fingerings, you'll notice that I do my thumb P twice in a row. Now I could have done it like that, which I wrote out. But originally when I had written this, I had another thought in mind, which was to shift my fingers up to position three and then borrow my index all the way down to two. I learned that once in the past from a great player, a classical player from Germany, Christian Kaiser. So you may want to just as a right hand variation for fun, try it the way I have it written with the, whoops, like that. Or try it the other way where these fingers shift into that third place home position and then bring your eye, your index down to string two. Then in the very last measure, it's very important, you'll see I'm gonna to switch to this chord. My index finger has never listed, so lifted, so it's the common thread in all of this. And then this is a, like a D chord, so here's a D here, but up at the seventh fret, um, that's actually a G chord in a D position. Now this is real important, you'll notice on the end of beat two, if you take a look below that eight, that, uh, that note there on the second string, your index finger has to play that note at the same time that your left hand is doing a pull off. So you wanna make those sound as evenly as possible. Don't have too strong or weak of a pull off and don't strike that second string too hard or too soft. And then right here, this is real key, on beat three there, your fifth string open gives you freedom to move. So when you start at nine, and I would try and do sort of a retard where you would slow the piece down a little bit, kind of like a resolve. And then just let it breathe out and uh, see if you can write three more minutes on that tune and create something for yourself. Anyway, good luck with the tune and uh, have fun.